Okay, the goal is going to be to design a small case to organize business cards or something to collect business cards in and maybe make it kind of stackable or that it fits together if you put multiple of those. So before we can start, we need the dimensions of credit cards because this is roughly the size of business card, which is according to Wikipedia about 86 by 54 millimeters. Okay, I'm going to add a business card, something as an orientation or, or reference. So this size is way too big, so we can go into the settings here and set it to uh, 54 millimeters square. And we need to make it wider, so it's 86 millimeters. Don't need to be accurate here along the y, uh, x axis. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to click here in the top right corner in the viewport overlay settings and I'm going to enable the edge length. Okay, now we can see it's 54 millimeters on each side and I'm going to resize it. X axis 86 millimeters wide. And let's assume a credit card is about one millimeter thick. So we're going to extrude it along the z-axis one millimeter. So if we select everything by hitting the A, E, we can see the dimensions. This is our simulated credit card. And this is more or less a bounding box. I'm going to look at it from along the x-axis and rotate this roughly in edit mode. I'm going to rotate. This is how credit cards should be stacked. I'm going to add a modifier here, a array modifier, so we can get multiple credit cards. So this is now oriented along the x-axis, which we don't want. We want to stack them along the y-axis, so it's a zero here and a one here. And we need to subtract a constant offset to get them closer. Like this. So, one of the nice things of Blender is if I just click into this field and drag the mouse, it moves it to a certain degree. And if you hold the shift key at the same time, it's a smaller increment. Slowly move things into place. And let's assume we want to have around, let's say, 32 credit cards in one case. Yeah, that looks good, yeah. So this is what I have in mind, more or less. And um, I'm going to design the case around this now. So let's give this object a name up here. Ref CC. Okay, so I'm going into top view and I'm going to add a plane. It's going to be the bottom plane. And I'm going to these here on the y-axis, so they're more or less centered. This. And I go into edit mode. Now I can't see my plane anymore, so by hitting the Z key I can enable the wireframe view and I can size it this way. Next, here in the top, we can enable snap to vertex, which helps because I can now select the edges, snap them. To the outside or the, the, from the top view. The parameters of the bounding box of all credit cards. And um, next I'm going to add half a millimeter of margin on each side. I'm going to grab each edge by half a millimeter. Well, let's make this one. So 
So this is the top view and I'm going to add another view for you so you can better see what I'm doing or what the operations are doing by pulling a here from this side. And this is going to be the right hand side and top left. Okay. So if I look at it from the side, I can see that my mesh is not really aligned horizontally, so I can resize it on the z-axis by zero, so this is flat, and then grab it to the bottom and leave a millimeter of margin again. And so this is more or less enough for those things to stand on next. Um, let me think. I will do the following. Go back into top view and wireframe mode. I will select each edge and extrude it by two millimeters. So two millimeters is my favorite wall thickness for printing with uh, 0.2 millimeter layer heights. Now, if I look at it from the front or from the top, you can see, okay, the, this is the ins what's going to be the inside of the box and this is what's going to be the walls of the box. Now, if I select everything and lower it by two millimeters and then extrude everything by two millimeters, I have this bottom frame here. Let me So this is the, the base and now I'll switch into the solid view again and select the top edges where the walls are going to be and select those edges and I'm going to extrude them by let's say 32 millimeters and we have a simple box where the cards can stand in. So next I'm going to want to add a little seam where the, the top box is going to be standing on. So I'm going back into edit mode and hit Control R to go into loop, cut and slide. And I'm going to cut each side here in half. Gives us yeah one millimeter thick walls here. I'm going to do the same trick again, which I did to create the first set of the walls, and I'm going to select the insides. And I'm going to extrude them by, let's say, three millimeters. So this is something that we work with. Now, next, we want to put a lid on this, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select um, the entire, entire top rim here, duplicate it, and use this as the, the counterpart of the lid that's going to be put on top of this. Next step is duplicate the top rim. And I'm going to selecting the top in the transparent mode, which ignores if something is visible or not. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it, then Enter and then B e, separate the selection from the mesh. Now I can select this, and grab it away, and this is going to be my, my top part that I can model. Okay. Um. Before I'm continuing with the lid, I'm going to go back into this part. So if we use an exact fit and print it, it will not really work. 
because of well 3d printing isn't that accurate yet or well at least my printer isn't what i'm doing here is i'm going to select the entire front and move it by 0.5 millimeters and i'm going to do it with the back part as well which will give us a gap between the top and the bottom part of 0.3 millimeters and those seams will be 0.8 millimeters so it's still two param parameters and won't break immediately so i can with the other sides I'm going to do the same with the top part. If we go into the wireframe mode and align it back down, we can see that we have oops a tiny gap here. It better in the corners for the top view. So let's align this down and select the top layer of this and pull it up by 0.6 millimeters so we have some space between those layers so that if the top layer finish isn't that good from your printer we can still close it and have some margin of error here and then we can select the outside this layer and extrude it upwards all the way up to the top of those cards add a millimeter for error margins do the same with the inside as well I'm going to hide bottom the cards and see what I'm doing here In this case, we can select this, pull it upwards. So we're on the same height, and then we can add another two millimeters. Close the lid, or select the insides here, create a solid shape. This would be the most basic box that I can think of to organize business cards in. How, how can we make this a little bit nicer? One is by rounding, nope, rounding the corners. And this we can do by two millimeters. And we can select which corners should be affected manually this way let's see if we go wrong and segments that's round same for those edges side names and let's hide the 
Reference credit cards for a second. We can go around the insides of the box. They are around it as well. Get it from the top. See that it's rounded now. Okay, let's do the same for the top. Take the modifiers 2 millimeters and 9 segments. So we're going to add the same modifier. Gets the width of 2 millimeters, 9 segments. And edge weight as an indicator on where it should be applied. And also do it on the inside. At the bottom case again. Outsides again because I did a mistake by selecting the inside as well. Outside, at the weights again, select the inside as edges. Let's see if it works if I select the corners. Yeah. Also around the corners. Turn it. All right. To unhide the bottom. Um, reference cards, if I go into wireframe mode, look at it from the side, we can see we can pull this down and close it. And we have a box. That should fit quite nicely.